to show you the point cloud data we've collected, simple steps towards georeferencing that data using the control file provided by Adam and the blue and white HGS targets we saw outside, and also then, as I said, moving on to generating uh, some deliverables and also integrating it with the DXF file and some of the imaging capabilities of the total stations that you've seen this afternoon. So this is Cyclone, and within Cyclone, I just open up the servers, which is my machine. We've got a series of blue cylinders. Each of those blue cylinders is representative of a database, and that's how we store the scan data. It's not a file-based system. So we have our raw data on the instrument, and we convert that to a database structure, which we can then utilize. So it means if anything happens along the line, something gets corrupted, we can refer back to those original files. They're not being affected um, by the import process. So if we open up the Wembley one, I've got a couple of folders. I've got one C10, one 7000. So hopefully you now know the differences between the two products. First, I'm going to open up the, the C10 data. So this is one medium res scan with photographs. So I'm just going to open up the photo. This is the panorama from the C10. So that is 260 1 megapixel images, not high res. This is just the, the low res option. And we've blended those images to give you a nice finish. Okay, so that color information now can be burned directly onto the point cloud, but almost used as a deliverable in itself. So we just open up the point cloud data. This is the data just from the C10. Okay, so you can see there's some modeled elements in there where I've been playing around as well. I'm just going to line up to this scan data. Okay, so you can see now how that color information has been burnt onto the point cloud. The points are still loading currently, but if I just zoom out a little bit in panoramic mode, you can see now how that is a single scan setup from the C10. You can also see the range at which we've scanned. And I think I said to most groups, I just gave an indication that we scanned into the distance over to the crane. There's the crane over in the distance. We just pick a point on that crane and just do a distance back to the scanner. We go 238 meters away. Okay, so we're getting good quality data that's usable for modeling at that range. We've also collected, collected some high resolution patches at the top of the, uh, the, top of the tower as well. If we zoom in see done a high resolution patch and we've started generating some models from it. So each of those is made up of individual strand, uh, single sort of straight line uh, holes and the software interprets those and can generate the cylinders. We can also fit those to parts that we want. So that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. So in terms of data collection, at 6 minutes 49 seconds with the C10 plus a few, few additional high resolution areas and then about 2.5 to 3.5 minutes for the image collection. If we now just open up the 7000 data, just to give you a comparison. This is a 3 minute 22 second scan with the HDS 7000. So we're still getting all the detail at the top. Let's see if there's another glass. Hmm. There's, the, there's a little high resolution patch over Bobby Moore as well. You can see the range at which we're getting data. So again, if I just do a measure over to this building over here, do a distance back, uh, back to the scan, 138 meters away from a phase-based scan. <coughs> Hopefully that highlights the range. And if I zoom in to Bobby Moore, we've done the high resolution, you can see now the density of points we've got over here. We've done something a bit special with him as well, we'll have a look at when we finish the main processing. So we want to obviously stitch those two data sets together. So we use our, our processing package called Cyclone Register. So we just create a registration. I've already done one, but I'm just going to go through the basic steps. We add our scan world, so we add our CTEP data. And we're going to also add the control file that Adam provided. So Adam gave me a USB stick with the coordinate file uh, listing T1, T2, and T3, the blue and white targets that you saw outside. We're now just going to georeference that data. So you can see station one is currently bold. That means that that is the home scan position. What we want to do is make the home scan position the coordinate file. So we're going to move that data onto the coordinate system specified by Adam. So we just say right click, set home scan world. What we do now is say auto add constraints. Then we say register. If we go to the constraint, constraints tab, we've now got a listing indicating 
how T1, T2, and T3 are fitted together, and an error and an error vector as well to indicate how they've been fitted together. So that data has now been moved onto grid. What we want to do then is maybe add the data from the 7,000, but we haven't used targets. So we use a method called cloud to cloud registration where we pick points in the data. So subjects having a roughly 30% overlap with the two data sets, we pick points in each of the data sets and we can merge it. So in that instance, all we do is we say add scan world, we add our 7,000 file, copy that across. We then say cloud constraint, cloud constraints wizard, say that there's an association between station one and the 7,000 data, and we hit update. And then we end up with this two panel window. On the left hand side we've got station one from the C10, on the right hand side we've got the 7000 data. And then it's just a matter of picking common points to give an indication, a rough indication of how those data sets should be fitted together and the software will take over the remainder. And it will use a, a percentage of the data set by the user, <coughs> range from 3% up to 80-90% you know, if you want, depending on, on the geometry fit. And then it will use the geometry of the data to pull them together. And there is an argument that, oh yeah, use targets, it's very, very accurate, but you're only using three targets. When cloud to cloud, you're using potentially millions of survey points to move that data around to put it in the right place. So with the C10 data, if we just run around this building with the C10, it's level survey data, and we would not use targets. We could actually stitch it together using two pick points per station. We're using the 7,000. Obviously, it's just got the tilt sensor reading, so we need three pick points in order to make sure that that data is fixed correctly. So there's our two positions, all you do, you just align yourself up in each one, use the pick tool, pick common points, we say that corner there roughly, that corner there, and we just repeat, go through the process. Now, we eat into too much time, so once that's completed, go, you create a registration, and you end up with the registered data set. We'll just zoom out a bit, put it into uh, perspective, post ortho. And there's our two scan locations. So hopefully you can see we've got station one here from the C10 and station two there from the HDS 7000. Now sat happily together. And if I pick a point anywhere on that data set, at the bottom here, we've got an indication of the OS coordinate for that point as the data has now been georeferenced. And the data from the 7000 has been georeferenced because we've tied it to the C10 data. So we're now happy to start moving forward with producing deliverables from the point cloud. So in terms of generating a true view, I'm not going to go through the steps because it involves pretty much staring at a progress bar for approximately three minutes per scan position. I don't really want to do that. So all we do is we go file, publish site map, say whether we want it in color, black and white, whether we want to incorporate geometry, which is something we can do as well. And we end up with a package of files which results in a true view. So this is the front end to a true view generated using the Cyclone Publisher module. And you can see We've got these little yellow icons. This, this view here is just a plan view silhouette mode of the data that we've, we've collected. So it hides the, the front facing points and gives you sort of a nice sort of drawn effect. But each one of those icons now, we can click on and it will take us through to the data. So let's click on station one. Here's our true view for station one. So we're now in true view. And this doesn't cost the end user anything, unless of course you want to charge them, but true view is free. Cyclone Publisher, the module used to generate these, is the bit that you pay for. So it's almost like a PDF file, if you will. So there's all the scan data. And then maybe we want to take some measurements. Maybe we want to get a coordinate. So we hit coordinate. It locks off the areas where we can't measure to. And then we pick a point. We've got coordinate value. Another point, another coordinate value. We've also got views. So any, any measurements that we do make are stored in views. So if we click on ones that we might have done previously, Okay, we'll take you and show you that data. So we've got a point from there to there, 290 meters. So again, it just goes to show the range of this instrument over and above what you can achieve with the, the 7,000. So we can also get uh, delta values as well. So maybe we want to do it with a slightly different type of measurement. We'll just pick from there to the floor. We've got a distance, but we all have a, also have a delta in x, y, z. So we can see the difference between those two points, 7.977 meters. So we can also add, and we can also jump between stations as well. Uh, just go back to our plan, just go over to our 7,000 data. So this is now the 7,000 data, so note the lack of colour, this is grayscale intensity. What we can do now in exactly the same way, we can, you know, we can measure up as well, so we can pick points along here, and just 
picking those, and along the side here now we've got 3D markups, 3D vertices, and you've got an indication of the X, Y, and Z for each of those points. And they can be read directly out into a CAD package.